Hello and welcome to the video. For those of you that watch the channel a lot, you'll know that I really like wings. I have quite a few of them and I fly them very regularly. Two of the most expensive fixed wing models that I've bought have been the TBS Kaipeina 2 and also the Mini Drac from Right Wing that has become a project that stalled a little bit because I've put a lot of effort and love that was going to go into the Mini Drac into the Dart XL. But the Mini Drac and the TBS Kaipeina 2 are both made from EPP foam, which is very, very rugged. But both of those airframes cost a lot of money. So I've been looking for an airframe that we could use to build out a plane for that and kind of endurance stuff and flying around and looking at the countryside that I love to do but that wouldn't break the bank. And this is the one that I've got in to have a look at to see if this will fit the bill. Now this is from an outfit called finwinhobby.com. I'll put a link in the description. And this is their transformer wing. And you'll see why it's called that in a minute. It's about $80 and it's available in lots of different options both black and white. I've got the black one in here. Now it doesn't come with electronics. If you want electronics, you can buy the servos from them. So it's not one of those that all the bits that you need is going to come in the box. But hopefully as I've been scrolling down here, you'll see some of the cool things that you can do. You can actually have one single motor at the back. You can install the two nacelles into the sides and have a twin motor setup, which is what I'm personally interested in doing with it. Or you can buy more nacelles and put them in so you can have four motors along the front leading edge. So it's quite a versatile wing. What it doesn't show you in these images is also got lots and lots of room for cameras, including a downward facing camera. So this is a very cheap, inexpensive airframe. If you're looking to do something with maybe a Pixhawk and Ardu pilot and you want to do some aerial photography. So let me just show you how this comes in the box. Uh, this is how mine arrived. My box had had a really tough time getting to me here in the UK. So as I'm unpacking this, I am very carefully checking all the parts to make sure they've all arrived. So luckily, even though the box was really scuffed up, uh, Finwin Hobby had done a fantastic job of wrapping everything. So you see here, this is the nose cone uh, that replaces the nose at the front if you don't want a camera looking out at the front for FPV, which of course I'm going to do. Uh, these big pieces here, that's the vertical stabiliser, there's just one. Uh, it doesn't have a rudder cut into it. Apologies for keep knocking the camera here. Uh, this is quite a big model. So there's the two wings. Uh, you need to cut the sides of the elevons so that they move freely. Uh, they're molded in place with a foam hinge, but they've actually got these industrial sized hinges in place as well. And on the side, you've got all the cutouts for the servos and other pieces as well. You're gonna need a couple of 17 gram servos for this. Vertical stabilizer, no rudder cut into it, but in some of the images I've seen, uh, people have cut a rudder in. But to be honest, I'm probably not gonna bother with that couple of extra pieces let's just pull the rest of this out now this is the main central body uh, the main central body has all of the spars that you're going to connect into uh, it doesn't look long enough because there's actually the nose piece as well and it looks like everything has survived the trip so let me show you how this thing goes together the nose goes on the front and then these engine nacelles go on the side obviously when you're putting it together for real you're going to put the carbon fiber pieces in uh, held in place in the middle by uh, some nice chunky nylon screws that are supplied as part of the kit and then you have the wings that go on the outside as well and all the spars that you need to put this together are actually in the kit itself i find with mine i needed a little bit of wiggling to line up all the holes um, but once uh, they were in place the wing was staying on nice and securely so here's the top piece that's going to go at the back of where the camera fits at the front. So that's going to slide underneath and fit into place. And that is also where the vertical stabilizer is going to fit into. And it's going to be all held in place with another couple of nylon screws. This looks like it is built to be taken down and transported quite easily, even though when it's together, it's a pretty big wing. Load of space in the front for your FPV gear and your battery and tons of room inside the main part of the fuselage for a flight controller and also all of the mounts and different pieces for a downward facing camera for if you want to use it for that mapping function. And that's really cool because most of the mapping planes that I've looked at that would allow you to do that 
are seriously expensive. So it's impressive to see something like this for less than $80. So if you're going to put it together properly, then you're going to have to find all these carbon rods and put them in place. And in these images, you can see the one of the few things that I'm not overly impressed about is the finish on the EPP. Now, black EPP uh, apparently is quite tricky to get a really flawless finish on the top. If you're going to cover this in some kind of film, you're not going to see this anyway. On a white version, I've been assured that you wouldn't be able to see these kind of uh, imperfections. It's almost like it's got grease or something on the top but it's not even if you give it a thorough clean it's still in there it's kind of molded into the surface of the wing now that's not going to affect how it flies at all but it just doesn't look quite as pretty or as finished as some of the other EPP models that I've had in so hopefully for those of you that are looking for a cheap and cheerful way to use with a, maybe a standard Pixhawk or to do something for longer range flying and you've been looking for an EPP wing that isn't going to break the bank but give you loads of room for endurance FPV, then initial impressions on this are very good. For me, I wish that surface finish was a little bit nicer and some of the parts going together aren't as slick as some of the much more expensive models but this is an interesting option for those of us that want to do the endurance flying or the mission flying, particularly with surveying and a downward facing camera, but don't want to break the bank. So any questions or comments, pop them down below. And then as I get motors and props and things in over the next month or so, I will build this out and take it for a fly. Thanks for watching the video and watching right to the very end. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you like the video and like what I'm doing here, then hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification icon too. If you really like what I'm doing, you can go the extra mile and become one of my Patreons for access to me directly for support and also giveaways and regular updates too. If you're looking for particular content, then check out the playlist. I organize all of my videos into playlists. So if you're looking for a particular topic, you can find everything here. If it's called Introduction To, it's designed to start very simply and build on that simple introduction to teach you all about it. If it's called For Beginners, then that is really aimed at people who are brand new to that part of the hobby. You can also search on YouTube for anything that you're interested in using the search function at the top. So iNav Painless 360 will find all of my videos and even the playlists around iNav. So thanks again for watching and happy flying.